Becky. This question comes from Mark Wares, and it has to do with Berkshire's compensation. He says, how does Berkshire structure the performance-based compensation of the CEOs of its subsidiaries? Please be as specific as you can regarding the metrics on which you focus the most, and how the degree to which those metrics are attained translates into compensation. Yeah, well, the first thing we do is we never engage a compensation consultant. And the, uh, we have, whatever it may be, 70 plus or whatever number of businesses we have, they have very different economic characteristics. To try to set some Berkshire standard to apply to businesses such as insurance, which has capital as a bulwark, but which we get to invest in other things we'd invest in anyway, so there is a minus capital involved to a BNSF or a utility business where there's tons of capital involved or in between C's where there's very little capital involved. We have other businesses that are basically just so damn good that, you know, that a chimpanzee could run them. And we have other businesses that are so tough at times, you know, that if we, if we had Alfred P. Sloan back, you know, we wouldn't be able to do very well with them. So there's enormous differences in the, in the economic characteristics of our business. I try to figure out what, if I own the whole business, what is a sensible way to employ somebody and compensate them, uh, considering the economic characters of, characteristics of the business. So we have all kinds of different plans. It doesn't take it doesn't take a couple of hours of my time a year to do it. We have managers who stay with us, so they must be reasonably happy with the plans, and. Uh, you know, it, it, is, it is not rocket science, but it does require, it, it requires the ability to differentiate. It re, if we had a human relations department, it would be a disaster. You know, they, they would be attending conferences and people were telling them all these different th things to put in equations and so on. And it just, it, it, it just requires a certain amount of common sense and it requires incidentally an interaction with the managers that where, you know, I listen to them, they listen to me, and, and, and uh, we sort of agree on what really is the measure of what, they, of what they're actually adding to the company. And, and uh, uh, I would, what, do you, what do you say to that, Charlie? Well, I think the U.S. Army and General Electric have centralized personality, uh, personnel policies that probably work best for them. And we have just the opposite system, and I think it clearly works best for us. Uh, and practically nobody else is entirely like us, which makes us very peculiar. And don't you? Yeah, we, we really like it that way. We get worried when people agree with us. <laughs> the, uh, we, pay we pay some very big money on it. I mean, we have managers that, that have made and will make in the tens of millions annually, and we... We have managers uh, that, that uh, you know, when we suffer, they suffer. Uh, but it, you've got to treat people fairly, even though they don't need the money. They, they, everybody wants to be treated fairly. And, and uh, so the, the rationale for how you're doing it should be understood. But there is no cross Berkshire rationale at all. I mean, if you run C's Candy, to, to put a cost of capital factor in or something like that with the consultant, it's nonsense, you know. And uh, there is, it isn't going to make any difference whether there's 40 million or 43 million or 37 million of capital in the business. And uh, the main thing to do is, is, in terms of market position and all of that sort of thing, the real thing I really want to pay managers for is widening the moat that separates our business from our competitors' businesses over time. Now, that's a... That gets very subjective, so I, I don't have any perfect way of doing that, but that is always going, going through my mind in trying to design compensation systems. So far, like I say, I don't think, I can't. Can you recall any manager that's ever left us over compensation, Shirley? I think it's amazing how simple it's been and how little time it has taken and how well it has worked. And... Uh, 
there's this idea that headquarters can do these wonderful things. Headquarters in a conglomerate kind of a company is frequently hated in the field. We don't want to be hated in the field. We don't want an imperial headquarters with big costs that's imposed everywhere. And, uh, and averaged out, it's worked wonderfully well for us. Yeah, we make no headquarter charges. We, we, we charge for our credit with a couple of companies, but, but most companies are, you know, are allocating a couple percent of sales, maybe, or whatever it might be, to all the different operations, and usually it's resented out in the field. And, uh, Is it ever? Yeah, so we don't do it. 